Let's do another example. Z squared is equal to 25 minus X squared minus Y squared. And I want to calculate the partial derivatives di Z by di X, di Z by di Y, and di X by di Y. And I'm going to try to do this with implicit differentiation. Now for this function, I don't necessarily need to use implicit differentiation. I could easily isolate my Z's, my X's, and my Y's. But I thought I would do it with implicit differentiation nonetheless. So let's use implicit differentiation rules. Now it's a three variable problem. So there's a lot more combinations that we we're looking at. For this one, I'm looking for di z by di x. So I'll be taking the partial derivative of f with respect to x and dividing it by the partial derivative of f with respect to y. And of course, there's always the negative sign behind that. I'll also be looking for di z by di y. And I'll be looking for di x by di y. Now before I can begin the process of implicit differentiation, I need to set this up so that I have f of x, y, z is equal to a constant. So here I have z squared is equal to a function with x and y. So that's not going to work. I don't have a constant on either side of this. So f of x, y, z, if I set this up to be f of x, y, z, this is not equal to a constant. Z will be changing, X will be changing, Y will be changing. This is not a constant. So that will not work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the equation and I'm going to move Z squared to the other side of the equation. So now I'm going to have 0 is equal to 25 minus X squared minus Y squared minus Z squared. Now I have a constant on one side of the equation. Now if this is my f of x, y, z, I satisfy the condition that it is equal to the constant, the constant being zero. So now I can use my partial derivative rules. I'm for di z by di x, the first derivative that I'm trying to solve for. It will be equal to negative f sub x divided by f sub z. Now for this function, my partial derivative with respect to x, I only have this one x term. It is going to be equal to negative two x. For my partial derivative with respect to z, I only have this z term. It's going to be negative two z. While I'm at it, I might as well do my partial derivative of f with respect to y, as I'm going to need it later. I only have this one y term the derivative is going to be negative 2y. So there are all the partial derivatives. Now to solve for dz by di x, I'm going to take negative my partial derivative fx divided by my partial derivative fz so that I get negative fx is negative 2x, fz is negative 2z. My negative 2s here cancel each other out. I'm left with dz by di x is equal to negative x over z. Now I've solved for dz by di x. Let's try solving for dz by di y. Now from the previous part of the question, I've already set up my f of x, y, and z to be equal to 25 minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared. And I've also determined the partial derivatives f sub x, f sub z, and f sub y. Now to solve for dz by di y, I have negative f sub y divided by f sub z. So this is going to become negative f sub y is negative 2y divided by f sub z would be negative 2z. My negative 2s cancel each other out and I'm left with negative y over z. Now I only have one more of these derivatives to do, di x by di y. So I'm going to use the relationship negative fy over fx. Recalling my function f and its associated partial derivatives I have here, I can then write di x by di y is equal to negative f sub y over f sub x. My partial derivative with respect to y is negative 2y. My partial derivative with respect to x is negative 2x. Of course, all of this should have a negative sign behind it. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 cancel each other out. Di x by di y ends up being negative y over x.
And there I've solved for how x is changing with relation to y. So there's your introduction to implicit differentiation, another technique we can use to determine derivatives.